Hey everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today I'll be doing uh, my first tutorial on ANSYS and in this video I'll be telling you how uh, you can model up a cantilever beam and uh, do a, a 1D analysis on it using uh, ANSYS mechanical ADPL. So uh, for, uh, we have a load of 500 newtons that is applied on this end of the cantilever beam and uh, as shown from this data, we have a cross section about 100 mm cross 100 mm. The length is 1000 mm. The tip load is about 500 newtons. The Young's modulus is 2.1 into 10 raised to power 5, and the Poisson ratio is 0.3. The density is 7.83 into 10 raised to power minus 6. As you can see uh, from the units, this is a CGS system and not an SI unit system. And an important thing about ANSYS is the fact that um, whenever you are modeling something and uh, you are using dimensions that are on a consistent basis so whatever answers are being displayed they are independent of the units so that is very important thing and has to be kept in mind so uh, at the end of the video what I'll uh, do is that we'll see the deflection that comes out from the finite element formulation in the um, ANSYS mechanical ADPL and then we'll compare the value that comes out from this deflection formula and we'll see to it whether it comes close or is far away uh, so let's start up with the video. First of all, uh, we'll go to a new analysis. Uh, now here uh, in preferences, I'll be selecting the structural model. In the preprocessor, in the element type, uh, click on add. And here uh, we'll be selecting the beam element two noded 188. So 188 is the shape function that is involved uh, when we are using this two noded beam element, and uh, it's the 1D element that is uh, represented by this. Click on OK. Uh, go to material properties and in material models, go to structural, go to linear, elastic, isotropic, and here type in the uh, values of your Young's modulus. Click OK and in the density, I'll be typing in the density in the same units which were corresponding to the Young's modulus as well as uh, the Poisson's ratio. Yeah. So after doing this, uh, we'll go to sections and uh, click on beam, click on common sections and here uh, we'll be typing in the cross section of the beam and also what you can do is type in the name here and uh, go to uh, this uh, option and you can select various type of cross section which are there click on preview and as you can see we have this square cross section click on ok now what i'm going to do is uh, i'll go to modeling click on create key points in active coordinate system and uh, mark two points which will be corresponding to the two ends of the beam click apply and this point will be uh, on the x-axis at a distance of 1000 mm. Click OK. And now go to lines. Go in active coordinate system. Select this line and this line. And uh, therefore this line element gets created. Uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, go to meshing. In that I'll be going to the size control option and manual size. Click on lines and go to pick lines option select this click on ok and type in the edge length or the number of elements you can do it either way so click ok as you can see this line gets divided into numerous elements and now what I'm going to do is um, go to the mesh option click on lines select this line click ok now uh, in order to see what actually has happened what, we, what I'm going to do is go to plot controls option Go to style, click on size and shape, switch it on. So as you can see uh, in this, the square cross section is shown and the entire uh, beam is divided into 100 elements. And we also can go to numbering, go to element numbering, click on OK. And uh, I'll just zoom it up a bit. So as you can see, uh, this is element number 50 this is element number 51 so this entire beam is divided into 100 elements and uh, therefore we are going to do analysis on this so I'll just uh, switch these options off so that it becomes much more clear 
what I'm going to be doing next. Um, go to style, click on size and shape, switch it off. And switch this off as well. Now we're going to go to loads option, click on define loads, apply structural displacement and on nodes. Select this node, click on OK and uh, click on all degrees of freedom. So this node is restricted uh, in all the uh, six possible degrees of freedom. So it won't be able to move in any possible direction. Uh, now we're going to go to force moment, click on node. Select this option and in the Y direction, type in minus 500 Newton. Now we're going to go to solution, click on solve, current LS, click on OK. Solution is done. And now what I'm going to do is plot the results of this. You go to general post proc. And first of all, let's go to plot, see the deformed shape of this. So as you can see, the beam goes bent like this. And if you go to query results option, click on subgrid solution. Go to UI displacement, click on OK and select this point. As you can uh, see, the displacement comes out to be minus 0.0959 mm. And now I'm going to check this solution with the uh, solution that comes analytically. So as you can see, the solution, uh, the formula is PL cube divided by 3i where i is the moment of inertia. So 500 P into L, 1000 mm divided by 3 divided by the Young's modulus 2.1 into 10 raised to 10 raised to power 5 sorry I did something wrong in the calculation let me just do it again uh, so P into L cube slash 3 slash 2.1 into 10 raised to power 5 divided by B, uh, bh raised to power 4 by 12 that is the moment of inertia about the zz axis for a square cross section so 100 raised to power 4 into 12 so as you can see uh, from this formulation, uh, from the analytical formula, uh, we get uh, the displacement of the endpoint as 0.09523 mm. And if I go to subgrid solutions and select this, uh, we get a solution which is very close to the actual answer. So I think the finite element formulation done here is absolutely correct. And therefore we can, instead of modeling this as a 3D element, I, I can possibly model this solution as a 1D element. And uh, now I'll go to plot results, go to contour plot, click on element solution. And here uh, you can select various things like X component of stress. Uh, go to plot controls, click on style, size and shape, click on. So as you can see, uh, the entire contour plot of the on the deformed beam comes. And um, if I go to the um, one mice stress, we'll see the maximum value comes out 2.985 at the point where this is rigid, which is, I think, logically correct. So um, that's it. Thanks for watching and feel free to leave comments below. And uh, if you have any other further questions or comments, please leave them. I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks.